The Next Generation Science Standards were released in 2013 to stimulate and build interest in STEM, prepare students for college, and to enhance skills such as critical thinking and inquiry-based problem solving. However, the NGSS is full of information and can be difficult to interpret. This presentation will guide you through the steps necessary to properly research your lesson using the NGSS. The first step in the process is identifying the correct TEKS for the lesson. The example that we will be using for this presentation is an Earth, science, Earth and Space Science TEKS. Specifically, we will be looking at TEKS 8.7a. Looking at this TEKS, it is clear that it contains more than one lesson. It is important to keep the one concept per lesson best practice in mind while designing an effective science lesson. You can refer back to the presentation on three lesson planning principles for more information on this best practice. The concept within this TEKS that we will be focusing on is seasons. The NGSS is focused on a coherent progression of knowledge across kinder through 12th grade and is organized into grade bands. In order to research our concept, the proper grade band must be selected. Knowing that this is an 8th grade TEKS, we can determine that this will be in the middle school grade band. The NGSS can be viewed in a topical arrangement or in the disciplinary core ideas arrangement of the standards. Both arrangements are organized into four disciplinary core idea domains. Physical science, life science, earth and space science, and engineering technology and applications of science. Within the appropriate grade band, determine which disciplinary core idea domain the TEKS and the concept of seasons would be located in. Once the grade band and domain have been identified, the performance expectation statement can be found for that concept. Performance expectations state what students should be able to do in order to demonstrate that they have met the standard. This is an example of a performance expectation statement in black. Performance expectations will frequently include a clarifying statement and an assessment boundary in red. This example only has a clarification statement. The performance expectation statements are given coded names to represent the concepts within them. Each code name contains a grade band, a disciplinary core idea domain, and a sequential number. Performance expectations state what students should be able to do in order to demonstrate that they have met the standard. Within the middle school or MS grade band, the domain can be identified by a series of letters. Earth and space science is represented by ESS. Reading through the ESS performance expectations, our concept can be located. Our concept has been identified as part of the MS-ESS1 dash one performance expectation. In a moment, we will be further breaking down the performance expectation statement. Before moving on, it is important to keep the three lesson planning principles in mind while researching concepts. Knowing that the three principles are one, one concept per lesson, two, concrete to pictorial to abstract, and three, known to unknown, we can immediately identify one of the best practices within the clarifying statement for this performance expectation. Here, the clarification statement lists that models can be physical, which is concrete, graphical, which is pictorial, or conceptual, which is abstract. Being familiar with this best practice, we know that effective science lesson planning would include beginning with the concrete physical model before the graphical or conceptual models. This video will outline how to properly read the performance expectation statement and how to read the three foundations boxes before we work through it with our concept. When reading the next generation science standards, it is first important to understand how they are laid out. The standards have been developed as student performance expectations. These statements each incorporate a practice, a disciplinary core idea, and a cross-cutting concept. Together, 
These three dimensions describe what all students meeting the standards will be held accountable for. Many of the performance expectations have associated assessment boundaries. These are truly just meant to limit assessment. It is important to note that neither the assessment boundary nor the performance expectation itself should limit classroom instruction. For example, in a classroom, students would never perform an investigation without analyzing and interpreting data. In addition, many performance expectations have associated clarifying statements. These statements are designed to supply examples or additional clarification to the performance expectation. On the web, you will be able to choose the coloring option for the performance expectation that is most useful to you. Black and white, coloring just the practices and disciplinary core ideas, or coloring just the practices and cross-cutting concepts. Below the performance expectations are three color boxes that contain the foundational language for the standard. These foundation boxes are based on the National Research Council's document, a framework for K-12 science education. The language from these boxes was used to compose the performance expectations. This language gives additional clarification for each performance expectation. The lowercase letters in the foundation boxes show which performance expectations above they are meant to describe. On the web, mousing over the words in the performance expectations will produce a pop-up box with the corresponding foundation box language. Beneath the foundation boxes are connection boxes. These show which other standards have connecting ideas. Within the science standards at the same grade level, within the science standards at other grade levels, within the common core mathematics and English language arts and literacy standards. Each performance expectation statement incorporates three dimensions, a practice, a core idea, and a cross-cutting concept. We know that our core idea is earth and space, but the practice and cross-cutting concept needs to be identified. The science and engineering practices are a set of things that students do in engaging in science performances. There are eight science and engineering practices. One, asking questions. Two, developing and using models. Three, planning and carrying out investigations. Four, analyzing and interpreting data. Five, using mathematics and computational thinking. Six, constructing explanations. Seven, engaging in argument from evidence. And eight, obtaining, evaluating, and communicating information. Read the performance expectation statement in order to determine which practice is incorporated into the chosen performance expectation. This will not always be explicit or identical to the list of practices. Here, we can clearly identify that the science engineering practice for this statement is developing and using models. Cross-cutting concepts are a set of tools available to students that are used to make sense of phenomena. There are seven cross-cutting concepts. One, patterns. Two, cause and effect. Three, scale, proportion, and quantity. Four, systems and system models. Five, energy and matter. Six, structure and function. And seven, stability and change. Read the performance expectation statement in order to determine which cross-cutting concept is incorporated into the chosen performance. Reading through this statement, cyclic patterns can be identified as a cross-cutting concept. Students will be using patterns to develop their understanding of seasons. Using the three dimensions. The three dimensions include science and engineering practices, disciplinary core ideas, and cross-cutting concepts. Each dimension has a box found below the performance expectations. These are meant to provide the foundational language and expand upon the practices and cross-cutting concepts. Within each foundations box, the coded name for the cho chosen performance expectation can be found. Locating the code will allow you to double check that you identify the cross-cutting concept and practice correctly. 
as well as providing an elaboration on each dimension. Looking at the blue Science and Engineering Practices box first, we can locate our code ms.ess1-1. The code is located within the Developing and Using Model section, which is a practice that was earlier identified. This provides an elaboration on using models to describe phenomena. Next, looking at the Disciplinary Core Ideas box, we can see that our code is located in two locations. However, upon reading what each section says, we can eliminate one. The section on the universe and its stars says that patterns of the apparent motion of the sun, the moon, and the stars in the sky can be observed, described, predicted, and explained with models. The section of the Earth and the solar system reads that this model of the solar system can explain eclipses of the sun and the moon. Earth's spin axis is fixed in direction over the short term, but tilted relative to its orbit around the sun. The seasons are a result of that tilt and are caused by the differential intensity of sunlight on different areas of the Earth across the year. The universe and its star section does not apply to our concept and takes the seasons, but the Earth and solar system section does have the correct content. The green cross cutting concepts contain the code once. The NGSS also identified patterns as a cross cutting concept for this performance expectation. So why is this important? The NGSS should be used to align curriculum, instruction, assessment, and professional preparation and development. The NGSS are the newest of the science standards and most accurately reflect how students learn science. The emphasis of the NGSS is a focused and coherent progression of knowledge through the grade bands. And a teacher's deep understanding of the standards will produce more effective science instruction.